is that dignity is very important in a way in which very often we don't think about it. So let me begin. There are two ideas that are frequently conjoined in the history of Western thought. One of those ideas is that reason is attached to what it is to be a person, and what it is to be a person is attached to moral intuitions. However, reason exists alongside the officially sanctioned rape, torture, and mutilations. Cruelty has always accompanied the valorization of reason. Whether it's the United States, one of the ways to think about this is that there are no histories of the democracies without the history of slavery. Every major democracy in the history of humanity, as Orlando Patterson argues in the book, book called Freedom, has been accompanied by the history of slavery. 30% of Rome were consisted of slaves. Nearly 90% of Gloucester County in England were slaves in the 13th century. The United States was a slave-holding society. Every major society that we think of as a modern-day democracy was also a slave-holding society. Analogously, whenever we find in societies that promote reason, we also find cruelty. The view that rational moral foundations and their moral intuitions provide adequate codes of conduct for healthcare professionals is simply misguided. Let me explore some of the reasons why this is the case. It's not just that the major philosophers in Western history have all been racist. Kant, Hume, Hegel were all racist. But there's something more involved. Reason is considered an intrinsic quality of which reasonableness is a representative. That is, we tend to think of reason as a thing intrinsic within what it is to be a person, the way in which we think of character traits like virtues, trust, promise keeping as intrinsic qualities, intrinsic dispositions within a person. Now they may be expressed rationally or irrationally, but we think of them as something for which you have by virtue of the kind of being you are. Reason then is something intrinsic to being, but reasonableness can be expressed in a variety of ways. In an anti-black society, whites can all have reason. Blacks do not. Whites can be unreasonable, but blacks are always without reason. That's one reason, that's one way, one way to see this, is that the most well-off or accomplished black individual who clearly invents the trait of reason is very, very often seen as someone who is beyond race. That is, if he's reasonable, then he's beyond race. He's not a member of the racial group. One way to think about this is um, my wife pointed out to me that there's a, a, a T-shirt in our community being sold with Obama's picture on it. Um, and underneath the picture, it asks you to go look at Psalms 109, verse 4. Psalms 109, verse 4, is, it tells you uh, it wishes death. Uh, Upon the, upon the leader. It says, may his days be few. May another take his place of leadership. It's a hypocrisy. It's a way of degrading, demeaning, and disrespecting, seeing the person as incapable of being reasonable. It's the cognitive structure that's involved. The cognitive structure instantiated by the reasoning model itself. That's the problem. One way to think about how rationalism has limitations and is married to cruelty is to think about how it is we think that intuitions exist and we can have a derivation manual. That is, we can have these dispositions to be honest and trustworthy. And then we imagine that there is a way to translate that trait into action. 
This is quite difficult. Not only was John, uh, John Carter one of the persons who was a participant in the Tuskegee study, he took that very same study to Guatemala. He took those very same activities between 1946 and 1948 to Guatemala to experiment on prisoners. He saw himself as a reasonable person. It's well known, however, that reasons are not always a cause for action. There's not a simple correlation between being reasonable and taking an act. We know that all sorts of psychological variables intervene between the time you are reasonable or time that you are thinking about doing something and what you, in fact, do. That's why I reject Pellegrino's and Beauchamp's conceptions of proper moral conducts for health care for medical physicians because they provide us with a code of conduct based upon a picture of reason. Let me give you an example of why it's difficult to go from codes of conduct to actual behavior and how relying upon codes of conduct to dictate behavior without some other issues may very well lead to cruelty. Here's my example. My example is the example of the popular tree narrative, Dr. Dick. Dr. Dick was a rationalist. He relied upon standard procedures of drawing inferences and explanation. He relied upon the most reputable scientists of his day. He both considered the ontological standpoints, that is, standpoints that use moral principles, and he considered utilitarian standpoints, considering how it is to maximize good. Dr. Dick specialized in castration.